Welcome all visitors and members of this area of faith community. God has gathered us together to renew our efforts in sharing the life of Christ and being the love of Christ. So let us stand and introduce yourself to those around you that you do not know and greet the presence of Christ in one another. Our gathering song is number 303 in Breaking Bread, Around This Table. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. Good afternoon, everyone. We gather today that we might join in this heavenly feast that our God has indeed prepared for us. And so we come to partake in word and sacrament God's grace, God's life, and the fullness of his mercy. And so as we begin this liturgy today, let us do so ever mindful of our own need for God's forgiveness. Let us acknowledge our own sins as we open our heart 
to this heavenly feast. Lord Jesus, who came to feed the hungry, Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you came to teach us to love. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you came to forgive the sinner. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. in the highest and on May your grace, O Lord, we pray, at all times go before us and follow after and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the Book of Wisdom. I prayed, and prudence was given me. I pleaded, and the spirit of wisdom came to me. I preferred her to scepter and throne, and deemed riches nothing in comparison with her, nor did I liken any priceless gem to her, because all gold, in view of her, is a little sand, and before her, silver is to be accounted mire. Beyond health and comeliness, I loved her, and I chose to have her rather than the light, because the splendor of her never yields to sleep. Yet all good things together came to me in her company, and countless riches at her hands. The word of the Lord. Thanks.
saying, Return, O oh, children, to birth, for you a thousand years are like yesterday past, or as a watch of the night in every age, O oh, Lord, you have been. us away in a dream. At dawn we are like morning grass that rises to the morning sun, then withers and fades in every age. Oh Lord, you have been Teach us to treasure our days, give wisdom to our hearts. Return, O oh Lord, how long must we wait? Pity your servants in every age, O oh Lord. You have been our refuge. that we may rejoice in song. May your gracious eye watch over us and the work of our hands in every age, O oh Lord. You have been our refuge. You have been our refuge. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, indeed the Word of God is living and effective, sharper than any two-edged sword, <coughs> penetrating even between soul and spirit, joints and marrow, and able to discern relations, and able to discern reflections and thoughts of the heart. No creature is concealed from him, but everything is naked and exposed to the eyes of him, to whom we must render an account. The word of the Lord.
Behold, Lord, your servant is listening. You have the words of everlasting Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. As Jesus was setting out on a journey, a man ran up, knelt down before him, and asked him, Good teacher, what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus answered him, Why do you call me good? No one is good but God alone. You know the commandments, you shall not kill, you shall not commit adultery, you shall not steal, you shall not bear false witness, you shall not defraud, honor your father and your mother. He replied and said to him, Teacher, all these I have observed from my youth. Jesus, looking at him, loved him and said to him, You are lacking in one thing. Go, sell what you have, and give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Then come, follow me. At that statement, his face fell, and he went away sad, for he had many possessions. Jesus looked around and said to his disciples, How hard it is for those who have wealth to enter the kingdom of God. The disciples were amazed at his words. So Jesus again said to them in reply, Children, how hard it is to enter the kingdom of God. It is easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for one who is rich to enter the kingdom of God. They were exceedingly astonished and said among themselves, Then who can be saved? Jesus looked at them and said, For human beings it is impossible, but not for God. All things are possible for God. Peter then began to say to him, We have given up everything and followed you. Jesus said, Amen, I say to you, there is no one who has given up house or brothers or sisters or mother or father or children or lands for my sake and for the sake of the gospel who will not receive a hundred times more now in this present age, houses and brothers and sisters and mothers and children and lands with persecutions and eternal life in the age to come. The Gospel of the Lord. There's a movement spreading through our country. Perhaps you've seen it. It's a movement that is one of downsizing. The movement that I speak of is the tiny house movement. (laughs) Have you seen the show? Tiny House Nation. I'm always fascinated with the show. I don't watch much TV because usually there's not much on the television these days, but I am fascinated with that program, Tiny House Nation. These people who choose to downsize to the point where they move from a house that's 12, 15, 18, 2,400 square feet, and they decide to move into a tiny house of 200 or 300 or at the most 500 square feet. Imagine that. And even though, even though there's this movement to go smaller, 
to embrace tininess. Why, I'm still fascinated at those same individuals who want to now live in a space that's, well, that isn't very big. But even though they want to be in that tiny house, it's amazing how they want to create drawers and storage and they want all these kinds of things to stuff as much stuff into that tiny house as they possibly can. It's amazing, isn't it? But actually it's not so amazing. It's just human nature. It's who we are. As human beings, we are about owning. We like to own things. Because once we own something, why, it becomes ours. And once we own something, why, it not only becomes ours, but it gives us a sense of safety. Owning something gives us security. The joy of making that last payment on a, on a vehicle, the joy of making that final payment on a house, whether it be large or tiny, why, the security that comes with that, the sense of safety that, ah, now I have my own roof over my own head and nobody can take it away from me. Why, there's something about that sense of owning that's deep down within each and every one of us. We need to own. But the problem oftentimes is, once we own, we allow that which we own to own us. It seems to be where this man is that comes to Jesus in the gospel today. He's followed all the commands. He's done everything right. Kind of like you and I. You're supposed to laugh there, thank you. <laughs> but he's done everything right. Except one thing. Jesus says, go, sell what you have, give it to the poor, then come and follow me. But notice what Jesus does before he even invites this man to take the next step to discipleship. Notice what Jesus does, what Mark tells us that he does, why he looks at him. Mark tells us that Jesus looks at him. And then says, can you do one more thing? Can you go sell what you have, give it to the poor, and then come and follow me? It's the look. The look that I bet was a look of compassion. It was a look of love. It was a look of challenge. It was a look of opportunity. And nonetheless, why, there's something about this man that comes to Jesus and wants to know the key, the key to eternal life and why Jesus is handing it to him. He's offering him that key that he so desires in terms of what he has to do to inherit eternal life. And yet, there's something about the look that for whatever reason, the man, why Mark tells us, his face fell. It fell and he walked away because he had so many possessions. Jesus in the gospel today is inviting the man in the gospel and you and I to realize that the key to eternal life is this, to live in time, but to be centered in eternity. To live in time as you and I do, which involves, yes, being human, and it involves owning, and it involves accumulating, and it involves needing that sense of security and safety that we so oftentimes need in our lives. It involves all that. It means that you and I are here for a certain amount of time. We live in this time. But while we live there, we must be centered. Centered on eternity. So how do we do that? Well, perhaps a story might help us. There was a tourist who traveled to Europe, and he had heard about a wise, wise rabbi. And so he went to visit this wise rabbi and discovered when he got there how simple this rabbi was living. Why? He lived in a single room. And there were a few books on some shelves around the walls. And there was only a table and a bench. 
And the tourist looked at the rabbi and said, Rabbi, where is all of your furniture? To which the rabbi answered, where is yours? And the tourist said, mine? I'm just a visitor here. So am I, replied the rabbi. I'm just a visitor here. So am I, replied the rabbi. My friends, I believe therein lies the key. The key to living in time, yet being centered in eternity, is to recognize that you and I were visitors here. And we're only here for a very short period of time. And while we're here, we can do a, a few things. We can travel down the path of owning and accumulating and having this and eventually being owned by it. Because, of course, once we own something, then we got to protect it. And then we got to secure it. We got to do all those things. And so all of a sudden, it owns us. And we can go down that path or we can simply live in this time enjoying the gifts that God gives to us and then always being centered on eternity, always thinking about why we are here and where we are headed, or at least where we hope to head. It's what Jesus was inviting the man of the gospel today to do and it's what he is inviting you and I to do. And to have the mindset of a visitor is an incredible thing because think about it, when you visit somebody's home, what kind of a stance do you and I have? Certainly it's one of gratitude. Gratitude that this person has invited us in. Gratitude for whatever it is they provide for us, a, a cup of coffee, a, a bar, a cookie, perhaps even a full meal. We're grateful for their friendship and their presence to us as they invite us in as visitors, but also a visitor is one who is always willing to help out who's always willing to serve, who's always willing to be attentive to those who have invited them in. And a visitor is always one who walks with humility and with humbleness, grateful for what these hosts provide for us. So we come to this table, and Jesus invites us in. He invites us as visitors. He invites us as friends. He invites you and I to do one more thing. But as he do, does it, he looks at us in our eyes. He looks at our face. He looks at us with love. And he says to you and I, can you do one more thing? Can you let go while you live in time and center yourselves with eternity because if you and I can, why then we hold the key, the key to eternal life. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things remain. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. 
I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord our God is our hope and our help and our salvation. And so in that spirit we turn to our God as we offer these prayers. That knowing that all things are possible with God, we will take time to pray for our church and the needs of its people, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That leaders throughout the world act wisely and justly to protect our environment and to eliminate hunger and poverty, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That those in our community who suffer from chronic mental or physical problems Find comfort and strength through the warm presence of a family member, neighbor, or friend, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That we experience a safe and bountiful harvest and share accordingly with those who are in need, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our loved ones who have died, especially Bernice Alquist, the Henrietta Magas family, and Ray and Mary Svobodny, rest in the loving arms of Jesus, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That our newly baptized members, Grady Nelson, Victoria Osaletelier, and Macy Taylor, along with their families and godparents, continue to reflect the light of Christ through their love of God and one another, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. O Lord our God, in you we live and move and have our being. Each day you grant to us your gift of life and love, and so as you bestow those gifts upon us, we pray that this Eucharist might give us the strength to walk in the footsteps and to follow your Son. Hear our petitions, answer our prayers according to your will, for we ask them through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Invite our children to bring their offerings forward at this time. Our song for the preparation of the gifts is number 653, We Belong to You, number 653. We belong 
Pray, sisters and brothers, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of the praise and glory of God's name, for our good and the Holy Church. Accept, O Lord, the prayers of your faithful with the sacrificial offerings that, through these acts of devotedness, we may pass over to the glory of heaven. Through Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the Lord be with you. Up your hearts. Lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is, right and just. it is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son. By whose obedience we have been restored to those gifts of yours that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks as in exaltation we acclaim. to be glorified, O God, who love the human race, and to always walk with us on the journey of life. Blessed indeed is your Son present in our midst when we are gathered by his love. And when, as once for the disciples, so now for us, he opens the scriptures and breaks the bread. Therefore, Father most merciful, we ask that you send forth your Holy Spirit to sanctify these gifts of bread and wine, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, on the night of the Last Supper, he took bread and said the blessing, broke the bread and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and gave you thanks, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. You have set us free. Therefore, Holy Father, as we celebrate the memorial of Christ, your Son, our Savior, 
whom you led through his passion and death on the cross to the glory of the resurrection, and to whom you have seated at your right hand, we proclaim the work of your love until he comes again, and we offer you the bread of life and the chalice of blessing. Look with favor on the oblation of your church, in which we show forth the paschal sacrifice of Christ that has been handed on to us, and grant that by the power of the Spirit of your love we may be counted now until the day of eternity among the members of your Son, in whose body and blood we have communion. Lord, renew your church by the light of the gospel. Strengthen the bond of unity between the faithful and the pastors of your people, together with Francis, our Pope, John, our Bishop, and the whole order of bishops, that in a world torn by strife, your people may shine forth as a prophetic sign of unity and concord. Remember our sisters and our brothers who have died in the peace of your Christ, and all the dead whose faith you alone have known. Admit to them to rejoice in the light of your face and in the resurrection give them the fullness of life. Grant also to us when our earthly pilgrimage is done that we may come to an eternal dwelling place and live with you forever. There in communion with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the apostles and martyrs and with all the saints, we shall praise and exalt you through Jesus Christ, your Son. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Together, let us now pray for our daily bread as Jesus taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, 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 hallowed be thy name. name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but to deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For, For the, the kingdom, kingdom, power, and glory are yours, forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other a sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us, grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. 
Blessed are those now called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall. Our song during communion is in this place found on the screen. We are all hungry people. We need shelter and strength. We are one in our heart. We are one in our pain, in our suffering and sadness. We are saved by the grace of the power spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living the Word. Our hearts and our spirit are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. All our lives are a mystery. We see not where they lead. We are asked now to trust you, and we know we must believe. As our feet become Christ's feet, we go forth with by grace of the power and the spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. Through the world they tell us to look at ourselves. We bow to where suffering and wells as our hands become Christ's hands we are healed by the grace of the power and the spirit that is here in this place we are gathered at table as Who 
heart living the word. Our hearts and our spirits are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. In the bread that is broken, it is the Christ that restores. As we take, now receive him, we find love evermore. As the bread becomes body, we are filled with the grace of the power and the spirit that is here in this place. We are gathered at table as one in the Lord. We are gathered as people who are living the word. Our hearts and our spirits are nurtured by grace. It is Jesus who fills us. He is here in this place. Let us pray. We entreat your majesty most humbly, O Lord, that as you feed us with the nourishment which comes from the most holy body and blood of your Son, so you may make us shares in his divine nature, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. And the Lord be with you. The Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just one announcement for the lectors here at the Church of St. Mary. The new workbooks for lectors are in. We would invite you after Mass to stop in the ministry room to pick yours up uh, for your use at home. Our Mass is now ended. Let us go in peace. Our sending forth song is number 641, Lead Me, Lord, number 641. Blessed are the poor in spirit, longing for their Lord. For God's kingdom, kingdom shall be theirs. Blessed are the sorrowing, for they shall be consoled. And the meek shall come to Blessed are they whose hunger only holiness can fill, for I say they shall be satisfied. Lead me, Lord, lead me, Lord, by the light of truth, to seek and to find the narrow way. Be my way, be my truth.
Are they who through their lifetime sow the seeds of peace? All will call them children of the Lord. Blessed are you, though persecuted in your holy life, for in heaven great is your reward. Be my truth, be my love.